Hello and welcome to the module section on fixed income securities. As the name suggests, fixed income securities are classified in that manner because they provide, or they promise to provide, a fixed income stream to the holders of such securities. And the reason I use the word promise is because there's credit default risk involved in most cases. In financial markets, the type of securities that typically promise a fixed income stream are debt securities. That's why it is common in the world of finance to use the two terms, that is fixed income securities and debt securities, interchangeably. In this introductory video, I deem that it'd be helpful if we go through a couple of important points. I will not go into detail, but I don't want you to worry. These points will allow us to set the scene and will make our knowledge more concrete as we build on this in subsequent videos. Our first point is that bonds are the most common type of fixed income securities. What is a bond? Simply put, it is a tool for borrowing money in financial markets. It is a form of loan. Let's now describe how a traditional bond is structured. A typical bond promises to make a series of interest payments, also known as coupon payments, and to repay the par value of the bond at the bond's maturity date. The par value can be any amount the entity issuing the bond wishes, and like the bond's interest payments, that are also called the bond's coupon payments, there's alternative terminology for the bond's par value as well. To make it easier to digest, allow me to introduce the terminology over time. Continuing from where we left off, Typically, the final payment or maturity date, that is the day that the bond will cease to exist, will comprise of the last interest payment plus the par value of the bond. Before moving on, I'd like to remind you that over here we describe the structure of a typical bond. Not every bond is structured in the same manner. Moving on to our second point, credit rating agencies rate bonds based on the probability of default, and of course the rating of a given bond affects its price. There are different ways to define default. Here we'll define it as the failure on behalf of the bond issuer, who is the borrower, to make promise payments, either in the form of interest or par value payment. In reality, whenever there's a bond issue, there are legal documents associated with that issue that define what constitutes default and what doesn't. But this definition of ours will suffice, at least for the time being. Now to give you some examples of credit rating agencies, we've got Standard & Poor's, or simply S&P, Moody's, Fitch Ratings, and Egan Jones Ratings. I'm guessing that the first three are the ones you are most likely to know as these are the so-called big three credit rating agencies. The practices of these three underwent heavy criticism during, but also in the period following the global financial crisis beginning in 2007 or 2008, depending on how you see things. And that criticism will form the discussion in a future video on rating agencies. So this is it for our introductory video. To give you a taste of what is to follow, in subsequent videos, we will predominantly go through some definitions that every financial analyst should be aware of, and afterwards, we will get into bond valuation. It's important to mention that if you are completely new to finance, then I would strongly suggest that you firstly watch the first videos in the corporate finance section, as that's where I introduce fundamental concepts that will be used over here. You should at least have a basic understanding of the time value of money concept, the calculation of present values, future values, and the net present value. And what I just said especially holds true for the bond valuation part, rather than the definitional part. Take care.